This video was sponsored by AirUp. This is a Nerf missile. It's my own special design, and yes, it fires itself. But there's more, a lot more, because I spent nearly two solid weeks designing, building, and testing as many different Nerf missile launch systems as possible. And from the intuitive, to the imitative, to the just plain idiotic, you're really gonna wanna see them all. Oh, that is actually pretty neat. But like my recent video about self-firing Nerf darts, this isn't just an excuse to blow up some stuff in my basement. These colorful foam missiles are an opportunity and one that's been a bit overlooked. The following scenario should help explain. As you step forward, you can sense that an enemy detachment is coming into proximity, except they're holding just regular Nerf guns. So um, let's just start over real quick. So you're stepping forward, but with a Nerf missile launcher now. And the other dude is proximating uh, with his Nerf missile launcher. Nice. With each step, your senses heighten and hairs begin to prickle. You can smell it. You can taste it. You can... Do you see the problem? These giant blasters need to be pumped to fire because they have no trigger. And I get it. You're actually supposed to stand far away when you launch them. But that's not the point. The point is these and every single Nerf missile launcher are pump fired with all of the space in the world. Nerf has chosen to fill it with the simplest and least fun firing mechanism of all. Simply put, they nerfed it. But I won't make that mistake. If my brother and I could fit an entire launch system inside of a tiny Nerf dart, just think of what we could do with all of the space inside of a Nerf missile. So, for the first design, I wanted to make the same capacitor-based system from the DART video, but with some upgrades. Now, a lot of my commenters asked for more specifics, and it's really quite simple. It's too easy, man. It's too easy. The capacitor is the battery, and it powers a small heating element, which is used to ignite some flash okay. cotton. To activate, oh all that's needed is a switch to go between one of the contacts and the heating element. Then it's just a matter of some routing, a little heat shrink, and presto. Look at the comparison. Look at, the, look at the comparison. The capacitor is charged by connecting the main contacts with a power supply set to the voltage printed on the outside. And this capacitor has 15 times the capacity of the original Nerf Dart launcher, meaning it can do multiple launches before recharging. This design is so mind-blowing because it takes us all the way from a giant launcher with no trigger to literally just a trigger. Now I have a few more ideas that look normal on the outside, but their insides are designed to defy expectations. Just like if you picked up a glass of plain water, took a drink, and it tasted fruity. But that's literally what you can expect from today's sponsor, Air Up. I'm not kidding. This water bottle is filled with water, but it tastes like a variety of fun flavors because Air Up infuses flavor through your sense of smell. You've probably already heard that smell makes up most of what you perceive as flavor. So when you use this straw, air is drawn through their flavor pod and mixed with the water, giving you a tasty incentive to keep drinking. And honestly, I can't stop. I have to avoid certain foods like oranges for my health, but now I can freely drink their orangeade or tangerine thanks to their scent flavor technology. And while juice, soda, and even carbonated water are hard on your teeth, this is just water. My brother loves using his, and even David, who hates drinking water, is hooked. I I hate water and I've already drank like almost half of this <laughs> So if you want to drink more water, don't like the taste of water, or even just want something fun to do to pass the time, then get your own Air Up bottle and see all the different flavors by clicking the link in the description and use code JOELCREATES to save 20% on your purchase today. Because that light, refreshing, fruity incentive is gonna keep you coming back for more water. Thanks, Air Up. Let's put a pin in the self-contained launch systems, because some of you commented last time asking for a two-stage nerf dart, and that got me thinking about the Javelin missile. And thinking led to experimenting, which led to this. Woo! My first inertial activation system, made out of a drinking straw. You see, a nerf Javelin missile would be fired from a regular launcher, then activate an internal rocket engine, and the timing is critical. This guy's loaded with the charge. Now, this is more of an indicator than an actual source of thrust at the moment. <laughs> it was like, thoop, pop. This basic switch showed that it could use the force of a launch to activate a rocket fuse. I was both excited and terrified to test it. This is going to work. 
Probably. Inside the straw is a magnet. The bottom is a magnetic switch, and the top is a screw inside a couple plastic nuts. The magnet sticks to the screw until bumped hard enough to fall down to the magnetic switch, and the sensitivity can be adjusted by turning the screw. Simple. Woo! Or so I thought. This is a Nerf Javelin missile. The, ignore the tape. I like I should stand back. Yeah, you should. Now at first when it wouldn't launch, it was because air was escaping from the cracks in the crappy tape job. Let me try retaping it, we'll try launching it. I wasn't sure where to stand, I'm like, no, I, don't, I, feel like I don't really want to stand under that. Then when it did launch, it didn't go off because the capacitor was dead. I gotta recharge the capacitor on this one. Ah. Then, when I charged the capacitor, it didn't go off just to spite me. I mean, you got the first stage down, so that's cool. I'll be, I'll be back. <laughs> Those little reed switches were probably getting spot welded shut by the high current. But even when I built my own reed switch with two metal pieces, it was still super finicky. So we're just gonna come back to this one. I've got some work to do to improve on this. Thank you all for coming to this uh, proof of concept. As I've proved, conceptually, it's garbage. Now, thankfully, not everything gave me this much trouble. So I got a new Nerf launcher. It didn't take very long at all. Do you know why? It's wildly unsafe. What? Yes, that is my web shooter. And by sliding a missile over the empty web blast cartridge, it instantly becomes a wrist-mounted missile launcher. The part that punctures the CO2 cartridge was having trouble getting the full pressure. But in hindsight, that was probably a good thing. Uh, see it? It stopped it! Now, this application highlights something important. And I'm not just talking about the possibility of a cool Boba Fett design. It shows us that the inside of a Nerf missile is the perfect diameter for a 12 gram CO2 cartridge. And this is where things get really stupid. You see, at first I tried to design a simple spring-loaded puncture mechanism for a handheld launcher, but the spring wasn't strong enough, only making a tiny weak pinhole. So I tried smacking it, but the tiny handle made my grip too weak to transfer enough energy to the puncture button, unless I just smacked the whole thing against the ground. I mean, that, that kind of worked. And when an even bigger handle didn't solve this problem, well, let's just say we did something too dumb to mention and paid the price. Seriously, don't do this or anything that you see in this video. So that one's not a good idea. <laughs> Now we will come back to the javelin design. But first, I want to show you perhaps the simplest and also most complicated of all, because this missile is launched with a remote control. A basic 12 volt relay circuit is at the heart of this design, but it's a little bulky. I started with a heavy 12 volt battery, but switched to lightweight capacitors to meet the high current demand of the rocket fuse. I tried to slim things down by running the fuse directly off of the coil output, but the circuit didn't like that. I may have fried this output circuit. So I just did my best to fit everything inside as is. To achieve a modicum of safety, I put a reed switch in series with the power input. Push the button. Nothing happens, magnet goes into the trigger position, push the button. This means that you have to put a magnet on the switch in order to arm the missile. The problem with this idea is that it's difficult to stabilize the missile without a launcher. That and the limited radio range. <laughs> okay. Now I did try to make some improvements to this design, but it just couldn't stabilize from a static launch. All right, let's measure from here. To here. And when I tried throwing it into a spin before launching, it was just too far out of range of the controller. And when I threw it within range, it just did not have a good spin. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're gonna want this one at your next Nerf battle. And now we come back to our final design, the Javelin. And I don't know exactly why I wanted this to work so badly. Why I needed this to work so badly. You see, I completely redesigned the activation method from my unreliable magnetic inertia switch to an actual limit switch, which closes the rocket fuse circuit once the missile leaves the firing tube. Lovely. I did my best to balance the capacitors around the body and stuck the rocket engine as far up into the cap as possible, but my efforts worked against me when the now weakened foam walls couldn't hold the pressure of a launch without bursting, and the few that did launch failed for who knows what reason. I mean, this was the closest thing I got to a successful launch, but I needed this to work. I'm gonna make something stupidly simple, I'm gonna make two of them, I'm gonna take them out to the country, and they're gonna launch. So I went back and redesigned yet again, relocating the switch and the capacitors, simplifying and shortening every connection to be as foolproof as possible. I now had two final Javelin missiles and barely enough time to test them with my dad. I didn't tell you, you don't know what we're doing? You're shooting a missile, that's all I know. 
Hey, cool. Too bad the trigger doesn't work. It could be a lot more steady. Now this was all new to him, so I quickly brought him up to speed. <laughs> wow, that, that was a lot of power for nothing. Now uh, the real big guns come out, right? Here, it's the Javelin Nerf missile. I hate to look in, is that safe? Should be, it, I mean, safe enough. <laughs> safe enough? There should be like a second delay, so it'll poom. Oh, I can't wait to see it. How far will it go? I have no idea. Oh! First, I needed to listen for the click of the limit switch. This would mean that the fuse was disconnected from the capacitors and that I could charge them without it launching prematurely. But the blue one was giving me a hard time. I don't know. I don't I don't think it's getting it. I even tried adjusting the switch position, but eventually I just assumed that I was being too cautious. Okay, I think I heard it. We're just gonna go with probably, and if it launches right now, then it launches. It launches. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Apparently that didn't click. Do you have any more? You know, for the sake of this video, it would be really great to just have at least one good launch. One. <laughs> now, ideally, I would have set up my slow motion camera to actually capture the moment, but you can't have it all. Also, it would have been nice if it went further than a regular Nerf missile. Worth improving? Maybe. A good time with friends? Definitely. And I'm glad you came along for the ride. Please let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.